Facebook family. Thank you once again for joining us for another session in this seven messages to the seven churches series. Now we will be closing out tonight, lesson 16, with the book of Leo, the, the message to the church of Laodicea. Okay, so what I'm going to do to start, I'm going to read a little background information. And then we're going to look at it verse by verse. Okay, so I I got to, you know, give shout out to Brother Rick Rayner for the background mm -hmm. information. All right, our, our Greek scholar. So, the book of the, the city of Laodicea. Okay, so originally the city of Laodicea was called Diopolis, which means the city of Zeus. So years later, Antarctus II built on the top, built on top of the ruins of Diopolis, and renamed the city Laodicea in honor of his wife, Laodicea. It was it is located in the in the heart of the Lacoes Valley between Heropolis, which was about six miles to the north of and, and Colossi, approximately nine miles to the southeast. So you have Heropolis here, and then you have Colossi below. Okay, so Laodicea is in between these two cities. All right, so and that's going to be important later. Now, on a good, good, clear day, you can see the cities of Colossi and Heropolis from Laodicea. Now, Heropolis was a large military city with a church that had been founded by believers from Colossi. Now, it was renowned for its hot mineral water. Colossi was a smaller resort town. It also had a church. However, it was known for its refreshing cold waters. All right. So snow melting atop the mountains to the north naturally flowed down to the city. All right. So when the weather was hot and people wanted to be refreshed, they went to Colossi. Laodicea was the richest city in the region. It was nestled in among other rich cities. It was filled with fabulous architecture and massive buildings. Now, although most of the cities in that time had only one theater, Laodicea had two. It also had a huge stadium that it could accommodate up to 60,000 people. So that's comparable to some of our modern stadiums. Now, as far as the marketplaces are concerned, or the agoras, Laodicea had four. So they had four marketplaces. Right. So accommodating more than 4,500 shops. So moreover, it was also a banking center and a bustling hub for the te textile industry, all right, producing expensive black sheep wool. Now, of all that Laodicea was known for, its famous medical school was at the top of the list. Uh, it specialized in eye diseases and was well known for its production of fagrin powder, a medicine used for treating eye diseases. Okay. All right. So with that background information, with that background information, I want us to, to keep that in mind as we look, as we go through the verses, as we go verse by verse. You, you need some of that fried gear, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read verses 14 through 22 in the New Living Translation. And then we're going to look at the first first three verses and then we're going to dig in specifically looking at those those three. OK. All right. So Revelation chapter three, starting at verse 14 in the New Living Translation, it reads this way. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other, but since you are lukewarm, you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say I'm rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by, by fire. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me, so you will not be shamed by your nakedness. 
an ointment for your eyes so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open up the door, I will come in and I will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone who has ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what is he is saying to the churches. Okay. Now we're going to look at verses 15 and 16. All right. Verses 15 and 16. Now on your handouts, I got some common misinterpretations of this verse. All right. These two verses. So I don't know about you. I've heard this preach before. God either wants you hot on fire for him all the time or he would rather you be cold to him and leave him alone altogether. All right. I've also heard people say the Lord would rather you be all the way in with the devil than casually serving him. Now, before we deconstruct this misinterpretation, how where do you think these misinterpretations come from? And why is it so easy to believe them? Okay, go ahead, bro. <clears throat> well, these misinterpretations come from the true word of the Lord. And the world that we live that is crumbling right around us as we see this. I mean, it's blatant. And he's calling his children. That's why he says, my sheep will hear my voice. Mm -hmm. um, these misinterpretations, because pe misinterpretations to me is because everybody's following a way that's taking everybody away from God, from his commandments. And um, okay. that's my that's my word. On okay. All right. I just see it from a natural sense. Ice water when you're hot is good. And a hot drink when you're cold is good. But lukewarm... Nobody wants lukewarm anything. <laughs> okay. All right. Especially bath water. Yeah. All right. Okay. Eric, why you? Where do you think these misinterpretations come from? Um. I might know, like I said, the first one jumps out at me. I mean, when they told you, you know. You either hot or cold, spew you out of your So I remember even had somebody wrote a book about, um, I forgot, but the title was something like, Well, Christians that God can't stand. And so, <laughs> it, it, seriously, I had the wow. book, I don't even know where the book is at now, but um, they was back, you know, <laughs> either you on fire for God, he said, or just don't serve him at all, you know. Mm -hmm. You're in between, and he can't stand. You. And so he wants you one way or the other. And so it just comes from a lack of, um, um, now that I understand it, it's, it's definitely lack of un not understanding grace. Um, if you understand grace, it's, you can never come to that interpretation of what they're saying here when you understand the grace of God and what grace is all about. Okay. But I think it's just a lack of understanding what grace is all about. Okay. More when you understand the love of God. Well, is he ever going to want you to not draw near to him? True. It's still, it is, he, he couldn't possibly want you to be cold right. toward him. Couldn't right. be a good thing. <laughs> he would never tell you, okay, well, either you just serve yeah. me all the way. Take a break. Yeah, or mm -hmm. not serve me at all. He would, I don't think God would ever say that. You know. And also, the, um, I know this is going to probably hurt people. He's not love all the time. He's a man of war, too. Wakes his soldiers up. He, I, I know the love thing, but certain times, just like he did Sodom and Gomorrah, which we're living in, lesbianism is good, gay is good, all this. Even me, I'm guilty of it too. For not not lesbian or gayism, but you know, mm -hmm. probably get my little drink on. But I'm like, oh, he gave a lot liquor. But um, what I'm saying is, he ain't love all the time. And he said, when I come back, I'm not coming for peace. He's coming. War. This 
is what you see. Okay. All right, let's tie it up. Okay. Let's tie it up. Now, the brother said God is not in love all the time. Now, depending on how you look at that statement, you can either say it's categorically wrong or it's true to it. Okay. Now, if you look at the whole counsel of God, you can tie that statement together. Now, what do we know about God? God is love. love. He, he, he declares that about himself. So that's not something he does. That's who he is. Can I go to right. the scriptures? Okay. okay. All right. So John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. However, now, the scripture also declares what? Jesus came, to his mission was to d destroy the works of the devil. That's the war. That's the war. Right? That's, 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 that was what Jesus came to defeat the enemy. But the thing about it is, he did it for us already. Now, the victory belongs to us. However, what are we called to do? Enforce them. We are, we are called to enforce it. And the, the problems that we see in our world today is God's law enforcement officers haven't been on on our job. Big time. Y'all searching prosperity. Okay. Right. Not y'all, but they searching prosperity. You know, and and see, and that's and that's where we see the issues. We are called what salt and light. light. A city on a hill cannot be hid. But if we call, crawl, crawl under a rock ourselves out of our own free will, who's going to show people the way? Who's going to express the love of God? Because that's true warfare. And people look at the Old Testament where God would actually go in and get rid of a whole people group. And that was before the atonement when there was no salvation. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anybody casting out devils back then. And he knew when something had to be done away with. So that, that was an act of love for the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. But um, guys, I, it's obvious that um, I love it. Let me hug. There you go, my brother. Okay, brother. But because I, I love what you're into. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. We're blessed, brother. Love you too, man. Love you too. All right. <laughs> love you too. There you go. All right, bro. Because I actually was on a mission. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love you. Um, and I. I just, you know, All right. not, we're not knocking anything for anybody, right. but I, you know, I love you. So let's look at, let's go to First John. First John. And something Lana said last night, God's nature never changes, but his acts do. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it your phone? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sounds like, sounds like people walking in front of the front door. Okay, First John, chapter three. First John, chapter three. And let's start at verse one. Because when we we talk about love, you know, some people when they hear it there's an automatic resistance because we think, you know, marshmallows and puffy clouds and don't offend anybody, never say anything stern, right? right. First John chapter three says, starting at verse one, he says, see how great a love the father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God and such we are. For this, world, for this reason, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and yet it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. All right, so... We, we see that the love of God, Father, the Father's love for us, is the foundation by which we stand on, right? Because I can't 
be used in effectively in spiritual warfare without the foundation of the love of God. Because the two, the two aren't mutually exclusive. We talk about destroying the works of the enemy and love. They, 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 they work hand in hand. And, I'm, and we'll see this in our society today. Because there are people that believe if you're walking in the flesh, people will believe that the best way to fight evil is to do what? Retaliate. But the scripture says what? Return not evil for evil. All right. But return evil with good. And by which you will be you will turn you will pour hot coals on the head of the enemy. Because it, it is it's perplexing. Because if, if someone offends you, mm -hmm. someone if someone is commits some type of an act towards you that's that's unrighteous, right? The natural response is to Death. retaliate. No, Alright. However, if you, if someone takes your cloak and you not, you not only don't retaliate, but you give them your undershirt as well, as Jesus said, what type of response do you think you're going to get from people? And like, that, that's your crazy. Be bewildered. Yes. They're crazy. Well, What's wrong they with them? They take that to me as an act of weakness. Weakness, right? You're weak, you know. Well, you know, you're supposed to do something, so you're weak if you don't retaliate and do something, you know, harmful or, you know, because well, you're weak. That's not. So they look at you as being as a form of weakness. And by law, the Roman soldiers could grab you if you're walking down the street and make you carry all their gear for a mile. And the Lord said, Guaranteed. don't stop at a mile. Go another <laughs> mile with the guy, even though he's compelling you, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. This is counterintuitive. Because the... Soft answer turns away wrath. That's good. Because what you're doing is, instead of taking the bait, you're not taking Satan's bait. You're responding from the administration of another kingdom, the kingdom of God. So we... As we as we continue to walk, especially in the hour that we're living in now, these words are going to become more and more powerful. And the people that walk in this, this type of love, are going to shine like supernovas, mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Because the polarization that's happening in our world, in, in this nation for sure, is, is you know, it's, it's something that I've, like, I've never seen in my lifetime. But it's all in line with what, what scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24. Birth pains. Now getting specifically back to the text. Verse 15. Again in the New Living Translation. Jesus says, I know all the things you do. Talking to the church of Laodicea. I know all the things you do. That you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are lukewarm, you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold. I will spit you out of my mouth. Now, looking at this in context will give you the picture. Okay. Now, Gene already alluded to the area earlier. All right. So, Jesus' reference here was to water coming from the, the, the water supply of the city of Laodicea. Okay. So, Laodicea got its water from both of the neighboring cities. Heriopolis and Colossae. Okay. So Heriopolis, I hope I'm pronouncing that word right. Heriopolis was known for his its boiling hot mineral water, right? So, you know, hot water, what can you do with it? You can you can use it for cleansing. It's mm -hmm. therapeutic. Mm -hmm. right? Soak in it. You know, soak in yeah. it. Get get the get those, you know, the dirt, the grime, the disease, the germs off you. All right. So hot water is very useful. Right? It's of good use. And even today, hot water we use if we like to for coffees and teas, mm -hmm. right? Now, so Heriopolis, they the hot water came from came from there, 
Now, Colossi was known for what? Cold. Cold. Ice water. That ice water. In a desert. That'd be, that'd be pretty valuable. So how 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 refreshing is it? Is yeah. a, a cold glass of yeah. water on a hot day. And I've always been taught if you're cold, you're going straight to hell. <laughs> so now the issue, what, what Laodicea was having is, because see what they did, they actually built an a, a aqueduct, like a piping system where they were getting their water from these pipes from both cities. So you had the cold water coming from Colossae and the warm water, the hot, I mean the hot water coming from Heriopolis. But the problem was once that water traveling that distance through those clay pipes, it was no longer cold nor hot, but it was lukewarm. Now, what's more disgusting than some some just warm, not room no, temp, not room temperature water, but kind of like mm -hmm. it's, it's just lu it's like it's, it's, it's lukewarm. It's not really good enough to bathe in, to shower in, because you you know it's not hot enough to get any germs mm -hmm. off you, right? And you sure enough don't want to drink it because it tastes disgusting. And the thing about it that they made it more putrid was that the clay pipes some of the mineral from the pipes seeped into the water so it was not only that it was warm but it was putrid those contaminants from the pipes got into the water so we see that both the water from Colossae and Heriopolis was were equally useless both disgusting. Okay. So when Jesus is making this reference, we got to remember when he says, "I," he he will spew them out of his mouth. He's not referring to them as a people, right? What is he rebuking here? He's showing his disapproval for the works of the people of Laodicea. He's showing disapproval for their prideful attitude. That's what we see here. It's not a rejection of the people themselves, but of their works. Because remember, you go back to verse 15 at the very beginning. He says, I know all the things you do. That you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So he's not saying, I wish you would you would just all in with me or just leave me alone altogether. That's not what he's saying. He wants you all in regardless. That's what he wants. Now, he understands what, I don't, I, I don't even want to phrase it like that. God knows where you are. He will meet you where you are. But he won't leave you there. He won't leave you there. That's not his will for you to, to, to leave you where you are. But whether you stay where you are or not is contingent upon what? Your willingness to walk with him. And what's hot or cold do? Hot at the right time, cold at the right time is refreshing. So he's saying, I'd rather that you were hot or cold. I'd rather that you were a, a refreshing rather than, you know, the lukewarm spewing. Right. Right. I've always been thought hot is hot is good, cold is bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But as we see, if we look at the context, mm -hmm. and you know what the phrase go, how the mm -hmm. phrase goes, if you take a text out of its context, all you left with is the con. And see, when we looked at those misinterpretations at first, those are birthed out of a spirit of self righteousness, out of works righteousness. Mm -hmm. Because if I if I had a works my works righteousness lens and I looked at those verses, I would interpret it like just like that. That's exactly how I would see it. Especially if you had somebody you respected that was teaching you that. Right. You might not even look at it then, you just believe what he was saying. Mm -hmm. you know? But this is <laughs> that's what they thought. Yeah, oh, me too. And oh, like you oh. said, hey, if you had 
if you are being taught work righteousness, then you just suck that right on up. Yeah. Now, so let's look at what is the reason for Christ's disapproval. Let's look at that a little more closely. All right. Looking at verse 17. In the Amplified Classic, he says, For you say, I am rich, I've prospered, grown wealthy, and I am in need of nothing. And you do not realize or understand that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. That's a serious dichotomy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say I'm rich, I'm prosperous, grown wealthy, I need nothing. And the Lord says, <laughs> you don't realize that you're wretched, you are. pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. Polar opposites. Okay. Now, looking at that, all right, here's, a, here's another question I want to throw out there. So just like the mineral from the clay pipes seeped into the water traveling into Laodicea, how do the, the contaminants of this world seep into our lives to produce secular attitudes and behaviors? One of the things I think I, I was just kind of looking at the, the culture too. Um, first, I say not all culture is bad, but sometimes the culture can seep into um, the body of Christ, and we buy into some things we find ourselves caught up in doing what that's not to me. Um, it goes against the word of God. And so mm -hmm. we get contaminated by things that are popular in the culture and everybody's doing it and it becomes accepted in some cases by the Christ and we just say, okay, well, since they're doing it, we just... When you think about it, we, we have the truth, I mean the real true truth, mm -hmm. um, and we can't get it out there. If you talk to 90% of the world, they're like, this fellow sitting here. They remember every negative thing that's told them. Right. And they can repeat it. Mm -hmm. But they don't know the scripture that could negate it. Right. But I mean, they're, they're, they're hungry to get something negative so they can come against the truth. Right. Especially if they're not presently right with the Lord. That's all I was going to say. Because if I got stuff wrong with me. Yep, makes you then, feel better. Right, when, makes me feel better. When you started better. reading the word of God, he, he got so nervous. made uncomfortable all right you use the word culture mm -hmm. right and that's a that's a big one mm -hmm. you know um, because we can develop traditions and ideologies and philosophies right based on you know how we were raised what community what community we were raised in these all these things they have influence right but now if they're if those ideologies are in contrast with the word of god then there's a decision we have to make are we going to be conformed to the word or conform to the world that's and that's the conflict that we that we that we are faced with and it's not only in the lives of individual believers but there are church cultures mm -hmm. that have copied things from the world and it's rampant <laughs> and they're not they're going to fight you over <laughs> right and there's it's, different cultures like when we go to germany you can talk to people over there about jesus but they do it on an intellectual basis i, I was talking to a guy about jesus and he said do you really believe the man died and went in the grave and came out of it i said of course he goes how foolish <laughs> I mean, it's just in, they're intellectual. They're not offended. Right. They just can't get it through their head. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I just think that's a big I deal with it on a daily basis. And you know, I see culture. You know, I see Christians 
and the culture, and they, you know, when I see they buy into the culture, and one of the things in the culture, you, you know, is just say whatever's on top of your head. Yep. I mean, yep. Part of that's fair. because we're Americans, okay. and so you got our American rights, right? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that embraces us to think that we can say whatever we want, but the word doesn't tell us we can right. say whatever we right. want. Do you remember we're doing that meeting and that guy came in who lived in a dumpster up in the Stewart's Draft? The other guy, the painter, brought him in. He's been feeding oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just totally like that. I mean, totally anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-Bible. Let's go to Romans chapter 12. One of our favorite scriptures here. We see the Apostle Paul telling us how, how we are to get our spiritual pipe cleaners mm -hmm. to keep the contaminants out so that the water, the living water of the Holy Spirit can flow freely through us. All right. So I'm going to read it in the Amplified, then I'm going to read it in the Message. Verse 12, chapter 12, starting verse 1, he says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicated all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which, which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. And the message it reads this way. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And that's easy to be seen for your nominal Christians who go to church on Sunday, but then you don't see their life. They still live their same life and drenched in the culture. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, you know, Hispanic or Asian or Indian or whatever it might, you know, English, whatever it might be. They just keep on living that way and they go to church on Sunday. So they they have not renewed their mind to Christ-like culture. They're still functioning at an ancestry level. I saw Rod, Rod, Rod Parsley one time said a pastor came to him and said, you have a, what you call a full gospel church, he said, and I have a Baptist church. And he said, I've done the statistics. He said, the alcoholism, the divorce, the pornography, it's the same in your church and mine. Yet you say you have more life than we do. What's up with that? And Posse said he couldn't answer. And there's nothing wrong with culture. I don't mean that there is. I'm just saying that some people, that's the only culture they know. They don't have enough word in them. To know that this is what's supposed to rule and reign in our lives. Because mm -hmm. that's what you said. I was saying this this morning in Acts uh, 2, uh, 42, after Peter, you know, preached. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then it says here, you know, uh, 44, 41 says, chapter, chapter 2, verse, it said, those who believe what Peter would see it were baptized and added to the church that day about three thousand dollars and it goes on to say and all believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching the fellowship to sharing in meals and including the lord's supper and said to prayer mm -hmm. so like you said hey if you're not those four things after you get saved mm -hmm. 
if you don't give yourself to somebody's teaching, fellowship, prayer, you know, all those things, like you said, what you're left to be influenced by the culture. Mm -hmm. You still got, you know, mm -hmm. the old way. That's still your identity. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you still got the old way of thinking. Saying that, that Peter started a mega church in one day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mm. That's right. They were railroading right. today. <laughs> yeah, we a mega pastor. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, so mm -hmm. you have to give yourself. Notice that they devoted themselves yes. to that. Okay, now I got to get taught. Now I got it says renew, transform by renewing my mind, mm -hmm. giving myself to the Word of God. All right. And the Lord showed me years ago that's going to begin happening again, where thousands of people will get saved one day, and the way we do church, we couldn't do it. Right. I mean, if you, if you got a church holds 1,000 people and 3,000 show up on top of it, you're going to have to start a building program if we keep it going the same mm -hmm. way. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Because you know where those 3,000 went, they all went to houses. They split up in small groups mm -hmm. and all went to houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it's definitely a shift that's, that's happened. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, things are are definitely changing. They are changing. They are changing. Because the way we deliver, the way we meet, you know, even if, you know, as things calm down with the the, the, the frantic, the panic surrounding COVID, you know, it won't return back to what it was. Mm -hmm. You know, because of the fear. The fear. Because people are really fearful. And the media is pushing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you if you if the, if if that's your source of truth, that's your source of information, your primary source, then the fruit that you reap from that is what? It's paranoia, mm -hmm. fear, and, and lack you, lack of faith. Faith can't operate. But yeah. if people see us and that we're not afraid, that's a perfect opportunity to explain why we're not afraid. And I'm one of those people that want to lock in a room because I'm so old. <laughs> Keep me away from everybody, and I'm out everywhere. <laughs> Because I don't have any fear. Right. And and now see, here's the thing about faith filled, charismatic folk. What we can't do is not walk in love. Mm -hmm. Right. Because see what what's gonna happen and see what has happened. I've you know, I've heard different people talk or whatever. You know, you walk around with this level of arrogance because you, you found the truth in the scripture about God's protection. But you can't wield that truth and then walk walk contrary to the love mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. because you're doing more harm than good. A dear woman wrote an editorial in yesterday's paper. She was from Virginia Beach saying, okay, all of you got together for Memorial Day, you know, in big numbers. And she says, now, starting today, would you please wear a mask? She says, because some of us are old, some of us have cancer or immune systems that you know are down and we're the ones that hand you the hamburger or the we wait on you in, in the hospital we, in other words we're out there serving you and you could be exposed and you don't know it after you've been around all these people and she says we have faces we want to be around labor day to celebrate with our family and i read that and i thought she's absolutely right because we wear a mask not because we're afraid but because they're afraid. I wear it for other people. Right. 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 So to honor other people, not make me look like I'm the enemy or being insensitive, I'm not afraid of them. Because their whole but, deal is that we, we might have something we pass on. Right. right. That's why they want you to wear a mask. So I but I right. thought that that lady is right. That's she has a point. She is afraid of people that are walking around that they could be contagious and they don't know it. Right. And again, like you said, if it's, if it's gonna make you feel better, I'll yep. put one on. I'll put one on. Put one on. It's gonna make you, like I said, has nothing to do with me. But exactly. if that's gonna make you exactly. feel, and that's gonna calm your fears. Yep. Then I put one. That's on. love to me. That's what love does. I tell you what, they, that's Romans 14. Mm -hmm. That's the manifestation of Romans 14 mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. And we're not gonna go back and read it, but it, that's it right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have fear, but you know what? All right, y'all fearful. I'm gonna wear my mask. Mm -hmm. I go to go to the store. Now, if y'all saw me in food line the other day and I didn't have my mask on, I forgot it. Okay, I, I, I forgot on accident. Happens to me too. I forgot on accident. All right, I was just too lazy to go back to the car. But, but you know, when nine out of ten times I'm going to the store, I wear the mask now. Mm -hmm. 
All right. It's because out of, you know, obedience to the demands of the, the um, local government and out of love for the people, say, okay, you know, y'all fearful, okay, I'm going to wear the mask. All right. But is that, does that mean that I'm not walking in faith? No. No. Because whether I got the, the mask on or not, my faith is in what Christ did for me. Mm -hmm. Not the mask. Mm -hmm. Not the mask. Mm -hmm. I got sanitizer right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is my faith in the sanitizer? Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, this could fail. But I tell you what don't fail. Mm -hmm. That blood mm -hmm. doesn't fail. It cannot fail. It did not fail. And it will not fail. What he did for me. My seat in heaven at that banquet table. That's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Well, you said something like a few lessons ago. It's been a while back, but you said it, and I kind of, it's in between putting faith in faith and faith in the faith of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you just put the faith in your faith in it. Right. I don't know if a good example of that is like, I was kind of pondering that. Wouldn't faith in faith mean, okay, like for example, if I believe somebody will get healed, or if I believe they get healed, and I don't get healed like that, and then all of a sudden I, I conclude God is not going to heal me. Would that be putting faith in faith? Or I'm just kind of throwing something out there. Well, you could say that's a faith. That's a, a putting your faith in manifestation. What you can see in the moment okay. with your physical eyes. Because, you know, there are a lot of testimonies that that have been you know shared that you know in moments like that where there's a there's land there's hands laid on people they don't get any type of instant tingling no man no instant manifestation but you've had testimonies where people will leave the meeting and say oh, i ain't got nothing they just they just punch they just bunch of charlatans here and leave and they 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 leave with the, in the same condition they came but you take another person who's trusting in the works of Christ and say, you know what? By his stripes, I am healed. I'm coming to get some, to get this man of God, this woman of God, or these, these believers around me to agree with what Christ has done for the manifestation of it in my life. They, they don't get no manifestation right then. They don't see it. Week later, two weeks later, they say, hold on. I'm not coughing like I was. I'm seeing a little clearer. Right? What happened? There was agreement on what God has already provided for them. Mm -hmm. And the seed of faith was watered and it's starting to grow. And then you see the manifestation. But that's what happens if we if we trust in what we can see with our physical eyes, then we can lose it. We can miss it. Because we were looking for that, you know, every you know, everything to be miraculous. At, the, at that moment to see it physically, but it don't always work like that. I was in a room one time and I asked people, and they were all older people, and I said, how many of you have been prayed for? And at that time, nothing happened. But as time went by, you just stopped and said, wait a minute, that doesn't hurt anymore. When did that go away? They didn't even realize they were healed. They, they just realized it's not there now. And they were prayed back there. And almost everybody had had an example of that, you know? Maybe this is what you're talking about. When we were doing our healing room training, mm -hmm. and I remember when we first started, I was just consumed with, oh, my faith, is my faith strong enough? Is my faith strong enough? Okay. It didn't, didn't hinge on my faith. It's what Jesus has already done. It's God's power moving. I'm obedient. I lay hands on the sick, and then it's God's power. So I learned it took me a long time <laughs> to get over that. This isn't about me. This is not about my faith level. This is not about my faith, my faith. Is my faith strong enough? Because people say, oh, I can't pray in the healing room. My faith's not strong enough. Uh, if you got faith size of a mustard seed, right. you've got enough faith. It's God's power. You don't have to produce anything. Mm -hmm. But I was consumed with being, I don't have enough faith. My faith, my faith has got to work. Mm -hmm. So I always tell him, that's yeah, what you're I talking fight, about. I, you get I fought that battle. Your faith in your and faith. kind of tries to mm -hmm. come back, but yeah. So in the healing room, I always yeah. tell him, this is your deal. You told us to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. 
I'm going to do that. You do your part. I'll do my part. Right. I'm going to lay hands on the sick. I'm just going to keep doing it. So our, our job is the, is the obedience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you can't be obedient unless you have faith, because you, you won't do it. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Now, in verse 17, we hear Jesus saying, he calls them blind and naked, poor. All right. Now, another question I want us to look at is, how is pride and self-righteousness linked to spiritual blindness? Well, first of all, God gives grace to the humble but resists the proud, so it's impossible to get revelation when you're in that state. You block his grace. You block the light. And when you and when you start to walk by works, that always leads to pride and always leads to judgment and you know all kinds of stuff. Because yeah. you think to yourself, if I I did it, I must be somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, and you start pointing a finger at other people. When I always think, I know. I remember hearing somebody say, self righteousness is like it's like having cancer, which you don't realize. It, it is. <laughs> it's bad. And he said, you know, and and I'll be honest with you, I was. That's why I said I can do that. Fact, I was, I was self righteous and didn't know it, and so and it's covered up. I bet we all were in your, one time. you know, performance. Like mm -hmm. okay, and you put yourself here, above anybody because mm -hmm. you're in Behavior wise, I'm better than you are. You've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Right, and so therefore you you don't realize it until, and I think, I didn't realize it until I got a revelation of grace. Then when you get when I got a revelation of it, it's like, oh man. I realize. You realize what that scripture means. Without me, you can do nothing. Right, <laughs> and so therefore you get a rep. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So that you you there are people who really think that they are mm -hmm. serve the God when, like you said, when they are judging people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do now and you know condemning them and so forth. I mean, and you think that you are serving the Lord. You think that's what God wants you to do. You know, actually, self righteousness. And look Not. at the scribes and the Pharisees. They were also self-righteous. And mm -hmm. Jesus told them, I mean, they were blind, right? Yeah, he called them names, too. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. And them names won't, they won't pretty. <laughs> no. No. Let's see if, I ain't going to say it. <laughs> Let's go to Isaiah 29. So we're going to look at these scriptures. Isaiah 29, I'm going to start at verse 9. And I'll, I'll read it from the New Living Translation. Just, so just think, think, think pride, spiritual, I mean, okay. pride and self-righteousness. Okay. And, and blind, spiritual blindness. All right, New Living Translation says, Isaiah 29 and 9. Are you amazed and incredulous? Do you believe, don't you believe it? Then go ahead and be blind. You are stupid, but not from wine. You stagger, but not from liquor. For the Lord has poured out on you a spirit of deep sleep. He has closed, closed the eyes of your prophets and visionaries. All the future events in this vision are like a sealed book to them. When you give it to those who can read, they will say, we can't read it because it is sealed. When you give it to those who can't read, they will say, we don't know how to read. And so the Lord says, these people, are, these people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. Because of this, I will once again astound these hypocrites with amazing wonders. The wisdom of the wise will pass away, and the intelligence of the intelligent will disappear. What sorrow! awaits those who try to hide their plans from the Lord who do their evil deeds in the dark the Lord can't see us they say he doesn't know what's going on how foolish can you be how is the potter he is the potter and he is certainly greater than you the clay should the created things say of the one who made it he didn't make me does a jar ever say the potter who made me is stupid. Soon, and it will not be very long, 
the forest of Lebanon will become a fertile field and the fertile field will yield beautiful crops in that day the deaf will hear words read, read from a book and the blind will see through the, the gloom and darkness the humble will be filled with the fresh joy from the Lord the poor will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel so you see verse 19 the humble will be filled with joy with fresh joy from the Lord the poor will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel that those in a position of dependency on God reverencing God looking mm -hmm. towards him that's the posture we either have and that opens up the eyes of our understanding is maintaining that posture of, of need just like Proverbs says in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths alright alright now let's go to let's fast forward over to Mark 7 again we're, we're just we're looking at this concept of spiritual blindness and pride how they're connected Mark 7. I'm going to start at verse 5. I'm going down to verse 9. And I'm going to stay in the New Living Translation. He says, So the Pharisees and the teachers of religious law asked him, Why don't, you, why don't your disciples follow our age-old tradition? They eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony. Jesus replied, You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. For you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. And then he said, you skillfully sidestep God's law in order to hold on to your tradition. So you talked about culture earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 7, I looked at that, 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 that jumped out at, out at me. I said, Lord, may it, may it never be so with me. He said, their worship is a farce. For they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. But that's what self-righteous, man-centered teaching mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. The traditions of men make the word of God have no effect. Now we see the connection of pride and self-righteousness and spiritual blindness. Now, are there any other sources of spiritual blindness? Well, this is the parable of the sower, right? Mm -hmm. Matthew 13. Yep, so let's go there. So, okay. Matthew 13 and let's I'm going to start at verse 15 okay all right let's look at this in the I'll right, stick with the New Living Translation verse 15 he says for the hearts of those people are hardened and their ears cannot hear and they have closed their eyes so that their eyes cannot see and their ears cannot hear and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear i tell you the truth many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but they didn't see it and they long to hear what you hear but they didn't hear it. Right. And this is Jesus talking to the disciples. Right. And look at verse 18. Down to 23. He says, Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. All right, so we see culprit number one, not misunderstanding, lack of understanding. 
Because the scripture says, Hosea, my people perish due to lack of knowledge. And that's why in Proverbs 4, Solomon said, in all thy getting, get understanding. Because information is great, but wisdom, understanding, the ability to, to utilize knowledge. And I think that's, that's something that we're facing right now. Like people have, because Daniel said, towards the times of the end, what, what's going to happen to knowledge? Knowledge is going to increase. Knowledge will increase. And then the rest of that verse is also because you have rejected knowledge. It's not just your ignorance, but that which you've been told you've rejected. And that's kind of like the next verse. What was sown, I take it this way, that the person heard the word and welcomed it, but it was never applied, which is like rejecting it. So there's no fruit. All right, verse 20. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The very time we should apply what we heard, well, I know let some, go of it. I know some, I've seen some cases where people and for me, I, you hear something the first time, and you know, it's like, okay, and you know it's something to it, mm -hmm. but you don't fully hasn't understand. Taken, yeah, hasn't taken root yet. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they just quit. Mm -hmm. You know, they just like, okay, well, because they think they're supposed to get it, bam, like, boom, you know, and you don't always get it, like the full revelation, the first <laughs> time you, you hear it, and I said, okay, because some mm -hmm. things for years I kept... Okay, heard it, you know, okay, it's like, okay, I, I understand a little bit, I still got questions, and you know, you just keep, mm -hmm. look what it said, faith come by hearing, mm -hmm. and so you keep hearing, you keep, I heard, mm -hmm. I, I would hear this person teach on it, I get a little bit, then I heard this person mm -hmm. teach, and then they add to that, then I heard this person, and I said, oh, so now, so it began to, until you get a full revelation, and like, mm -hmm. okay, now I got it, I got it, but if you just, Stop. See another layer of the onion. Right. Mm -hmm. If you stop right there and just say, okay, well, mm -hmm. I didn't fully, he didn't fully, or she didn't fully understand, uh, answer all my questions. Or make the dis the mis misunderstanding that it didn't work. Okay. Yeah. You you think you applied it, you you think because you heard it, like it says in James, talking about the man in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You think you applied it, mm -hmm. or but you heard it, so you think hearing it is equal to. Doing, right, it. doing it right. and so then you're deceived and you said well it didn't work right right because what what faith will do is it'll govern my behavior my attitudes my responses because I, if I truly believe it then it's not it's not just the fact that I heard something good but I receive it and I allow it to dictate the way I look at things and the way I feel, and the way I respond. All right, so we see lack of understanding, persecution and problems, all right, as enemies to understanding or contributors to spiritual blindness, all right. Look at verse 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out with the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. So the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. Those two. Now, with that one, I want us to Go to First Timothy six. First Timothy six, and we're gonna start at verse three. All right. This is the Apostle Paul talking to to his spiritual son Timothy. He says. 
Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quabble over the meaning of words. This stirs up arguments ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicion. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt and they have turned their backs on the truth. To them, a show of godliness is just a way of becoming wealthy. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So we have enough food and clothing. Let us be content. It's the preacher I heard one time and said, do you know how much money Howard Hughes left when he died? And everybody got quiet. He whispered in the mic, everything. <laughs> didn't take any money with them. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. So spiritual blindness, chasing the dollar, can be a a, a major source of spiritual blindness. I think that's a big one too. You know. Yeah, they, now you look at that, and then you look at the Church of Laodicea. Yeah. They say, "I'm rich. I don't need nothing." Mm -hmm. So, but if gain is godliness, mm -hmm. then they feel like they've uh, they've reached the pinnacle of spirituality because mm -hmm. their bank accounts look good. But Jesus told them, you, you are blind, poor, naked. That's, that's what their true spiritual condition was. Their behavior, their attitude, all that's what that's what they look like in the spirit. Even though their bank account was fat. I think some people can't find that balance between, you know, you if there's you want to do better. Mm -hmm. You want better. And so, if God leads you, okay, yeah, so I'm going to work, and if there's any way I can increase my finances, good. But, but it also has to be, to me, balanced with the word of God. I say, okay, for me, I don't chase out of everything that says, okay, you can make money. You know, even though you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, what well, me personally, somebody may give me that idea, I say, okay, is this what you wanted to pursue because mm -hmm. it's not about the money you know I can do this but it's just what you want for me is this the um, direction you want me to take right. for financial prosperity could be a huge if, distraction in right your life. if not then I'm not gonna pursue it mm -hmm. you know because that may not be the direction that he wants to take you you know but I think that sometimes people say well okay hey it must be God because opportunities there I can do this. It's doable. Right. I see myself. Right. And, and, it's, and it's sad, too, when you got, when you see people, you know, especially believers, chasing after these get-rich-quick schemes. Yeah. The, you know, all this pyramid stuff and all this type of stuff. Because there's a spirit behind that. Mammon will swallow you up. And you spend more time at the, at, at the little meetings than you do in the Word of God. More and time in, pr like in, that, in prayer. He called me and said we could use you at the office. I called him. It was the Amway office. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, does that mean that I throw the baby out with the bathwater? It do. The Bible say money evil, right? No. No. Oh, there you go. Money. Okay. All right. I was just checking. It says the love of money. You can do a lot of good with it if you got it, but chasing it's not a good idea. Right. Love is a, I mean, money is a great servant, but a terrible master. It's a great servant, but a terrible master. We ought to have one master, and that's our Lord. 
And if we allow him to be our master, if we submit to his lordship, then the, then the money can be added to us and we can use it fruitfully because he, he talks about it further along in this same chapter. Verse 17, yeah, 17, Paul says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. He didn't tell them to give it all away mm -mm. and have nothing and be poor. Right. He didn't say burn it. He no. didn't say take your coins and your, all that stuff and burn it and bury it under the, under, you know, in the ground. He didn't say that. So be rich in good works. Generous. Share. So their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. And the Amplified says this, As for the rich in this present world, instruct them not to be conceited and arrogant, nor to set their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who, ri who richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Whoa. Look at how many businesses are going bankrupt right now. And some of them were probably very prosperous and they were, they had everything they needed. They didn't need anything else and now they're going under. So there's going to be a lot of struggling out there. Verse 18 says in the Amplified, instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, willing to share with others. In this way, storing up for themselves the enduring riches of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. So investment is the kingdom is the only investment that has a guaranteed yield. Amen. Moth and rust will not corrupt. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Morgan Stanley, Frank Templeton, they can't touch that. Nope. S&P can't handle that. Can't touch that. NASDAQ can't fool with that. But the kingdom, you invest in the kingdom. There is guaranteed. I bet there was a lot of guys ready to jump out a window two months ago as the stock market was tumbling. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a real good time for the wealth of the wicked to come into the hands of the righteous. I was thinking that same thing. This is. Some, I heard that scripture for years. This is a good time. And, uh, you know, it's like, okay, this is that time. Mm -hmm. yeah, the wealth of wicked. Mm -hmm. the I tell the Lord all the time, bring it on. I know what to do with it. I don't, I don't throw it away. Mm -hmm. I do go. I do the right thing with it. So, as the scriptures bear out, right, the Lord does not have a problem with you having money. Mm -hmm. He has a problem with it mm -hmm. having you. Mm -hmm. right. As long as it's not a barrier between in your relationship with Him, no problem with that. Because the more the more finance you have, guess what? The more people you can help. The more people you can help and be a blessing to. Just to buy more stuff. That's right. Because mm -hmm. you can't watch with so many flash screens <laughs> at one time, man. Right. You know, you can't watch with so many. You can't drive with so many cars. Exactly. It's like, okay, you got two, three, man. It's like, all right. Now, if I got 50 in here, what am I going to do? I mean, for real. And I got to pay tithe, tithe, you know, taxes, tags, <laughs> and insurance, especially in Virginia. You definitely don't want that here. You got personal, personal property, property tax on every one of them jokes. Mm -hmm. No. But if you had 50 to give away, there's some single mothers, some widows. How much of a blessing would you be mm -hmm. in their lives, mm -hmm. right? So the question is, what is the remedy for spiritual blindness? All right, let's look at verse 18. All right, Revelation 18. 318. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from me gold that has been heated red hot and refined by fire so that you may become truly rich and white clothes representing righteousness to clothe yourself so that the shame of your nakedness will not be seen and healing south to put on your eyes so that you may see all right 
so the Lord, him, he's he's telling the church of Laodicea, buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. Right. Now, I want us to keep that in mind. Let's go back to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, starting at verse 1, going to verse 3. Isaiah 55, starting at verse 1. In the Amplified, it says, Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy grain and eat. Come and buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Simply accept it as a gift from God. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your earnings for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and let your soul delight in abundance. Incline your ear to listen and come to me. Hear, so that your soul may live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you according to the faithful mercies promised and shown to David. So he's imploring us to buy gold from him. In the prophet Isaiah, God speaking through him, he says, come buy wine and milk without money, without cost. So what's the currency that we're using here? Humility. Trust. Reverence, dependence, honor, belief, mm -hmm. believing that he has already provided these things as a gift. He says, come by wine and milk without money and without cost, simply accept it as a gift from God. So that's the polar opposite of the Pharisee and the scribe. Mm -hmm. That's coming, presenting their righteousness before God and the people. They wouldn't help their parents because they said, I'm a gift to my parents, so I don't need to help them. Was it called Raka or something? Mm -hmm. So that's the currency. Our belief, our humility. Our integrity for, for God's word, our trust in Him. That's that's the currency. That's how we buy. True bread. The question I have on here is how great is how great is it that God's love and the riches of heaven that come with it are available as a gift? How great is it? Beyond words. The unsearchable riches mm -hmm. of Christ. We're going to live throughout millennia upon millennia and still be finding out more and more about Him. That's beyond my little natural mind. That's too much for me. But it's, it's, it's ours in Christ. Now looking at verse 20 in, in Revelation 3. In Amplified he says, Behold, I stand at the door of the church and continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, restore him. And he with me. Now I see something interesting here. Because in the Amplified it says. Behold I stand at the door of the church. And continually knock. 
He ain't just not one time. Mm -hmm. He said continually not. Mm -hmm. He ain't like the impatient friends that look, I'm gonna come by the house. I'm gonna not one I'm gonna talk two times. You don't hear me after the second time, I'm gone. He's not only knocking, he's calling them. He goes to stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice. So he's he's banging and saying, Yo, anybody home? He, he, don't, he don't give up. Uh-uh. He's pushing it. Man, he don't give up. That's right. So we see that we can't send away God's invitation for in intimacy with him. We can't send it away. Because he is what? <coughs> he is love. That's his nature. That's who he is. His, his arms can, are continually open. But the danger is with our own hearts, the hearts of men. And that's where the, the sin comes in and hardens the hearts of men. And that hardness drives them away from God, not vice versa. Because Jesus has already, he's made the way plain. Well, if you're taught that he, he quit on you out there. Mm -hmm. If you if you listen to uh, Job's wife's counsel, <laughs> yeah. Well, curse you know, God, curse God, God and die, man. It's yeah. over. You're done. You know. What well, what if David would have followed that advice? Hmm? Will we be reading about him? No. Even Moses. I, I heard Creflo today say he was reading that Moses was the most humble man on earth. He said, then it hit me. Moses wrote that book. <laughs> he, said, he said he was writing about himself. <laughs> I know. But it was funny. He made that comment. Mm -hmm. I want us to look at Psalm 130. Now you're not going to be able to receive this if you only see God as a man of war. Psalm what? Psalm 130. Okay. Alright. In the New Living Translation, it reads this way. From the depths of despair, O Lord, I call for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. Lord, if you keep a record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? No one. But you offer forgiveness. That you that we may learn to fear you I'm counting on the Lord yes I'm counting on him I put my hope in his word I long for the Lord more than the centuries long for the dawn yes more than the centuries long for the dawn O Israel hope in the Lord for with the Lord there's unfailing love his redemption overflows he himself will redeem Israel from every kind of sin. In the Amplified, I'm going to look at, I'm read verse 3. It says, if you, Lord, should count, keep an account of our sins and treat us accordingly. O Lord, who could stand before you in judgment and claim innocence? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared and worshipped with submissive wonder. Think about what intimacy the proud never experience. Because when you're humble and you repent and you experience God's forgiveness, that's a level of intimacy that it's amazing. 
But if you never repent, if you never humble yourself, that's a whole aspect of his character you have no familiarity with. And it'll make you, it'll make you, uh, Oh, besides what it does to you. Right, yeah. right. It'll, it'll turn, it'll turn you. You'll be, become judgmental, self-righteous. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's the way the enemy pushes you. Oh, God's mad at you. you know. But it's like, if you guys in here with that, with the, with the message that God's a man of war, he slaughters people, mm -hmm. uh, he started saying something about the prosperity message, and just mm -hmm. and I thought that's the world, and that the message that Satan's putting out is he's putting it out better than we're putting ours out right now. I was thinking, gosh, man, we we got to be able to counter this stuff. The yeah, one thing I learned also from from all that is covenant. You gotta understand what covenant. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's different covenant, and once you understand what the covenant was at that time. Yep, yeah, especially because in our culture. Yeah. Truth and keeping your word doesn't mean much. So, when people get caught, they cry, and they didn't get caught. They didn't cry because they did something wrong. They cry because they got caught. Mm -hmm. Right. They have, they have no conscience about doing something wrong. It was oh gosh, I'm caught now. Poor me. Yeah. So we see the the. The remedy or the the recipe for for holiness verses three and four receiving the the, the forgiveness mm -hmm. understanding the the depth of our transgression but receiving the free gift and understanding what was done that that produces that grace teaches us mm -hmm. to live a life of practical holiness. And we need to be praying that, that God would convict the whole world of sin because that will lead them to repentance. And it's not going to come from us, I don't think. Uh, I know when I got saved, it was just like an explosion of the Holy Spirit. I didn't ask for it. I wasn't looking for it. It just happened, you know. And I said, Lord, if you did that just for me, will you do that for the, the whole world right now, today? All right, so that means that when you when you are woken up at three o'clock in the morning, yeah, that's time. All right, you you don't just go to the bathroom. Time to pray too. Because mm -hmm. we we're, we're close to something big happening. We we not gonna find out till we on the other side how many you know how many prayers that have been prayed for us, and that, that, that have been used as as vehicles to keep us from. Mm -hmm. from things mm -hmm. to say to, to help to enforce mm -hmm. God's goodness in our lives so even verse 3 I know and, and that's a that was a document that was taught I know coming up and if you ask the question Lord if you keep record of what I was saying this rule law of the survivors you know, um, that's probably still being taught you know, they're taught God's keeping record Mm -hmm. Right now, every bad thing you do, mm -hmm. and then you know you have that give account for right. That. Well, then you come up with this, the doctrine. Well, I hope my good outweigh my bad. <laughs> yeah, so I got, I hope I got more in this column good versus my bad column because mm -hmm. I got, you know, right. I got a hundred good things versus twenty bad things. I'm the opposite. I have more bad than good things. <laughs> then I'm gonna come out but good. I'm gonna God gonna be like, man, eh, okay, you, know, you got more good than bad. We, we good. All right. And, that, and that's carnal, the carnal mm -hmm. mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It takes the, the the spirit of God to receive the gift of God. Yeah. So God, God's his um his valuation is not on the Santa Claus system. <laughs> She can keep the list and checking it twice, whether you've been naughty or nice. Nor is it on the curve. Right. <laughs> like you're the teacher, you know. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Oh, you scored Everybody's 90. saying, we're going on the curve. Right. <laughs> yeah, you scored a 73 versus, yeah. Good. Right. You both there. It's his standards. Right. His standards. It's like, hey, mm -hmm. if you're going, yeah. you're going by works, yeah. everybody fails. Yeah. Who could stay? You figure everything we have is a gift. We, and we can't, we can't earn it. Mm -hmm. So when you when you realize that you really kind of get humble, you really say thank you, thank you, Lord. Right. So 
So I'm going to close with the last two verses here to close out this series. Revelation 3, 21 and 22. And I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. And to the one who conquers, I will give the privilege of sitting with me on my throne, just as I conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. The one who has a heart, has heart, whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying now to the churches. All right, Facebook family, we thank you for joining us for this series of the Seven Letters to the Seven Churches. And um, we'll be back next week, but we'll, we plan on doing it on Wednesday next week. Okay, special Wednesday night edition. All right, so we'll, we'll be tackling some miscellaneous questions from Revelation. Okay. All right, well, until we meet again, I'll have a good one. Roy Rogers, Dale Evans used to be until, Until we meet again. <laughs> Happy trails. Yeah. So you said we're meeting on Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna be able to come out? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I know my son's birthday is on Thursday, okay. so. Yeah. Miss that. yeah. Another thing I'm excited, I just have to, I keep hearing from different ones that what God is going to restore to the church is fear of God in, 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 a, in a, a good way, a good way. the fear of reverence because yeah. I think that's people have gotten I'm a friend of God well yeah you are but there's you can get too casual mm -hmm. at the same time he takes you to woodshed once or twice mm -hmm. you won't get casual <laughs> yeah yeah what, what's the saying familiarity breeds contempt mm -hmm. I said, yeah, he my friend, but he, he, mm -hmm. he God Almighty, he King. What's your thing? A great and terrible, and not terrible in the sense of bad, but terrible in the sense of unlimited power. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, because some things we're facing in this life, we don't need a friend. We need a, you know, <laughs> we need our Father. We need mm -hmm. the Lord, yeah, yeah. Elohim. And that, that's how that's how good God is. He's, he he represents all facets. He is all that to us. I heard a preacher talking about the judgment of God. He said, if it ever comes to earth, he said nobody's going to be talking about it. They're going to be crawling under their houses and shaking in their boots. He said because it's so terrifying. If he ever displayed it. Yeah. Well, because in our culture period we have lost any sense of honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's there's, there's no honor. No, no, no. It's like in the way, and like the, like these presidents, like the last two we've had, I've never seen the slander of, mm. of like you mm. know the men the way I've heard. It's like they, they, they you know, man, it's, awful. It, it, it's just crazy. I'm like, yo, and and it's for I, you know, I expect that from sinners, but y'all save right? Yep. Believers, I'm like, you yep. can't. I mean, just yeah. if you, my mama told me, you ain't got nothing to be good to say. Yeah. Just don't say nothing. I'm like, you know, if you, I mean, I understand, you know, you, you, you have a perspective and you feel some kind of way. And there's certain things that have been said or done that make you feel some kind of way. Mm -hmm. But me running my mouth and just spewing venom yeah. on Twitter, Instagram, Periscope, mm -hmm. TikTok, mm -hmm. all these other places. All, they ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. If you a believer. Who are you working for? That's you right. have, all you have to do is Using ask them. Using the enemy to what's use it, your mouth. What's in your to heart? To accuse. Just to ask them, say, look in your heart. What's in your heart? And they're going to have to say darkness. But just honor for the office. Yeah, okay. You might not like the person. You might not have voted right. for the person. But the office still is to be held in high esteem and that's not happening anymore mm -hmm. and don't even don't even let me talk about the preacher lord have mercy people ain't got no respect for the preacher mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you a pal you a what since so you mention any preacher to a worldly done. person yeah, say, know, all he wants is your money that's what they'll say i don't know the attack i get at work you know well I gene know. i just need to come up there and set them people straight eric <laughs> i'll tell you i mean <laughs> man, everybody's all bad there's some you know like one girl, I mean, he told me. Sure. I mean, she just, is, she laid me out, you know, a few times. But then, um, the other day she said, you know what? Um, 
she heard somebody talk to me, she says, you know, what? And they respond to me a certain way. She said, all right, don't, you know, don't get caught in that. She said, I got great respect for you. And they caught me on God. Oh, cause, see, cause, she can watch him. Yeah, because she was the one that would cut me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, but yeah, yeah I mean, roads. man, you appreciate it. Man, they, you get, yeah. you know, they come at you. 